Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the um, sort of seminar for um, the Buy Turing Club kickoff session today. Um, I see that there'll be some uh, more researchers joining um, as we start the call. Um, but just as an introduction, I'm Alexis. I'm one of the scientists at Bioterrain. Um, and for today, we'll be mainly covering um, sort of or discussing the meta reference for cell typing um, to unveil um, macrophage subtypes in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, um, also known as IPF. Um, so this would be sort of the um, main concentration of the session today. Um, and it'll be one of the first sort of um, Biotrain Club um, research kickoff um, sort of sessions, um, but we'll ha be having more on different topics as well. Um, so I'll get started. Um, this session will be recorded, um, so we'll be able to share this after the call. Um, but thank you everyone for, for joining the call um, now. Okay. Um, so just as a bit of background before we start sort of going into the bioterrain system and how to identify these different macrophage subtypes. Um, so IPF, um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, is known as a chronic lung disease. Um, it is characterized by the loss of um, avular epithelial cells, which are replaced by scar tissue known as um, fibroblastic foci. The scarring reduces lung function and makes breathing difficult um, for patients. Multiple studies have suggested that inflammation and monocyte-derived macrophages drive fibrosis through an overreactive or reparative um, response to avular cell injury. Um, hence, sort of understanding the specific types of macrophages and how they drive this fibrosis um, is crucial for de developing um, targeted therapy. Um, so this will be sort of the main focus of the session today. Um, and how can this sort of um, topic and crucial um, analysis be applied using the Biotrain system, um, mainly the meta reference cell typing tool? Okay, um, so a bit more of how we're trying to sort of address this issue um, internally as a team and being able to sort of deliver um, the meta reference tool. Um, so we'll be sort of aiming um, to reproduce some of the research um, from a recent publication. Um, and we'll be reviewing um, a paper mainly authored by Christina Morse and her team. Um, so her team collected lung tissue samples, uh, mainly from three healthy controls and three IPF patients, and performed single cell RNA-seq um, sequencing. They discovered three subgroups of macrophages um, enriched in the population. These populations were mainly um, SPP1 high macrophages, um, FAP high macrophages, and FCN1 high macro um, sort of monocyte derived macrophages. Um, and these were the main sort of enriched populations um, sort of characterized um, within these patients um, at different severities of IPF. Um, and a bit more of the literature results that were found in the paper. Um, so SPP1 is um, also known as osteopotin. Um, and this sort of marker has been shown to support uh, monocyte um, macrophage proliferation. Um, and in doing so, this suggests that there's a macrophage sort of um, secretion process of this matrix protein, um, which might support this SPP1 macrophage proliferation in these IPF patients. Um, and sort of a lot of more correlations are discussed in the paper relating to the areas um, in the lung and also the severity of um, IPF. Um, so we'll be sort of uncovering these results, um, how to replicate these results in the system. And mainly, as I mentioned, the main focus will be how can we utilize the meta reference cell typing tool? Okay. Um, so before I go into, again, the system and how to replicate this um, using the tool, um, the meta reference cell typing tool aims to reproduce um, what is known um, as different subtypes and analyzing different marker genes um, by un uncovering different insights um, in the cross referencing annotations <clears throat> um, in the talk to data repository. Um, so all of this sort of data um, or all of the actual analysis is sort of um, run on sort of the talk to data repository and different data sets that are curated in the system. Um, the meta reference is a library of nearly 1,400 um, human data sets. Um, and basically sort of the aim is that we adopt um, specific gene markers for various cell types and subtypes of cells. Um, and just a way to understand this further. Um, so think of each data set as a book. 
Um, our tool tries to find similarities between other books um, from your specific data set. It allows to directly compare your data um, to every data set in the library um, before making a final decision or supporting you in sort of assigning the final cell annotation to those group of cells or clusters in your data. Um, so this is sort of how to think how the meta reference is applied um, within your data and in the context of the BioTrain system. Okay, um, so just before we go into the system, um, so I'll go into the screen and let me know if anyone has any issues viewing the data set. Um, so before going into the actual analysis, um, let's just sort of discuss what is the vein clustering, which is the first step in applying the meta reference tool. Um, so in applying the Louvain clustering method, um, which is found in the B Browser X system, which is our main analytical tool for single cell RNA-seq anal analytics or analysis, um, this method um, tries to organize your data by grouping similar cells based on the gene expression patterns. Um, Louvain clustering identifies different communities um, in your cells. And in by doing this, it tries to sort of um, create large networks, um, maps those networks um, to a particular suitable single cell data, um, and it allows cell, the cell typing tool to focus on very distinct populations by grouping the cells with similar expression profiles. Um, so that is a reason why this is sort of the first step of the prediction tool. Um, so how can you apply this? Um, so once you have the data set opened up in the B Browser X browser, you can directly go into the Louvain clustering uh, feature, and you just have to make sure what type of data you have uploaded in the system. Normally, when you're applying Louvain clustering, you have to make sure that the data is batch corrected. Um, and we use sort of a harmony method to make sure that data is corrected um, across different sample IDs or different batches from different data sets. Um, so just make sure um, before running um, the Louvain, um, you click on the harmony sample ID. And the resolution, what basically that means is that there's different data contexts, um, depending on what data context or what type of tissue you're working on, there's different resolutions you can apply the Louvain clustering method or the network analysis. Normally, some users might start at 0 0.4 and they might increase the resolution to be able to identify more populations. Um, so the increased um, resolution means the more clusters um, the network will be able to sort of return as an output. Um, so when you run the input embedding, um, you should be able to identify how many clusters um, the sort of network analysis um, returns. Um, so you can see it's a very quick um, process. Um, and once this sort of Louvain clustering is run, um, we can directly see um, that there are sort of 18 clusters identified from the Louvain clustering method. Um, and this is where then you can go on forward to um, sort of applying the meta reference cell typing tool. Um, so where is this method located in the BioTrain system? Um, this cell typing tool can be found in the cell type prediction feature. Um, so when you go directly into the cell type prediction feature, you'll see different um, modes or different modalities of the algorithm. Um, so the main sort of focus of the session today will be the meta reference um, sort of application of the cell type prediction tool and how it can be applied to the Louvain clustering that we just ran on the data set. So the network, um, analysis of the different um, cell populations. Um, so we'll be able to predict um, the meta reference tool and this will sort of um, be very quick. It will return back our reference library, how it's able to characterize these cells, the similarity percentage to other data sets um, in the system or in the sort of entire repository. Okay, so let's sort of explore the supporting data sets further. Okay, so in the seminar today, as I mentioned, sort of the main focus is sort of going back to this um, recent um, publication that tried to understand the different macrophage subtypes and IPF. Um, so the specific clusters that the cell typing tool sort of returns at, as an output, we'll, we will be mainly focusing on specific clusters that work on macrophages and monocytes. Um, so as you can see here, um, the overview of the cell typing tool um, sort of gives you an overview of what type of percentage um, the actual identification prediction tool returns. So based on two levels of the data, so you'll have both the major cell type characterization and the cell subtype annotation as well applied to the population. Um, so you'll be able to see it based on the cluster resolution. So this sort of maps out the different 18 clusters that we had in sort of the UMAP that I showed earlier. 
And each of the sort of clusters will have a certain percentage um, based on the agreement rate from other data sets from the repository. So again, thinking of this data set as um, compared to other literature, other data sets um, or books in a library. Um, so this is sort of the context of the analysis. Um, so for this session today, um, we'll be sort of looking specifically into cluster 10, cluster 11, cluster 12, cluster 8, and cluster 9, which are some of the clusters that we can see directly annotated from the tool as macrophage or macrophage derived monocyte um, or different subtypes of macrophages. Um, so if we start with the cluster 10, um, you can see it directly that it's able to sort of find an agreement rate of 52, 63% as sort of a monocyte. Um, and we want to sort of um, analyze this further. Um, so what is this data sort of telling us um, compared to um, sort of the literature, the publication that we're using as a reference? Um, so as you um, sort of remember, the publication sort of tried to understand different subtypes of macrophages and the author was able to characterize um, FCN1 high monocyte derived macrophages um, from sort of the results. Um, and if you can see here, if I directly select cluster 10 and I try to sort of visualize first the major cell type um, category, you can see that we are able to replicate what the author um, had found in their data in a much quicker way um, with the ability to be able to reference other data sets as well. Um, so when we sort of select cluster 10, um, and let's say we want to see um, the monocyte, you can see the first gene symbol that comes up is FCN1 positive expression. Um, so this sort of mirrors um, and sort of replicates the result of the author. Um, and how can you sort of analyze this further? Um, so as you can see here, if we go down sort of the gene symbol list, you can also sort of recognize that there's other gene markers, um, like for example, ICLR2 and ICLRB, um, which are normally markers seen in monocytes. Um, so what can we sort of um, discover from this FCN1 positive and other sort of uh, markers relating to monocytes is that this is sort of a monocyte derived macrophage um, sort of cell group. Um, so in, in sort of understanding that analysis, what you can do is sort of apply that knowledge and sort of assign it as your final annotation. So you can use all the supporting information um, and for example, if you wanted to go even further in analyzing, okay, what is sort of the expression? What does that mean in the context of the data? You can directly sort of go into the FCN1 marker. Um, so let me just go in here and try to sort of analyze this marker. Okay. Um, so once we go into the gene sort of overview, um, specifically looking at the top marker genes within that cluster 10, um, what this shows us is different information relating to the gene expression. How can we sort of um, infer different information from this? So you see that we have um, the different gene symbols. This is correlating to the final annotation and also cluster 10, which is the cluster that we first started to analyze. What does this other sort of gene symbols mean um, in the context of sort of the log normalized scatter? So we can see directly that um, this gene is particularly expressed in cluster 10, and you have different information relating to the level of expression or the unit. So the log full change, um, what it basically means is that it prioritizes the differential expression of each marker gene um, between different clusters. Um, so that's how you can sort of um, infer or reference that specific unit. The weighted log full change, um, it pri prioritizes the marker genes that are specifically expressed um, within a cluster and it's characterized by high or low um, within the cluster coverage and how low the cluster coverage is compared to others. Um, so this is how we identify what are the specific marker gene lists for that cluster in your data set. Um, and there is other ways from there that you can see, okay, what is the reference to other data sets in the repository? Um, so this is the first step, which sort of gives you the ability to replicate and to validate, okay, this is sort of a monocyte derived uh, macrophage cluster in my data set. Okay. So if I go back into sort of the overview where you have the different clusters, we can even go further into identifying, okay, what does this mean in the context of other data sets? Um, so again, if I go to cluster 12, and I tried to sort of analyze or sort of to look at what other data sets are sort of showing me this um, percentage um, agreement rate. You can directly again go and see the major cell type. You can click on explore. 
And what this is going to give you is sort of the details across other data sets um, that are sort of giving that same information. So how can I make sure um, this is a specific sort of macrophage and what type of macrophage is it? Um, so as you can see here, there are some um, data sets um, that you can go through relating to the expression pattern. And if we go into this specific one, like the GSC128, um, what it's showing is that this specific cluster 12 is a FAP4 high macrophage. So this is replicating originally what the author um, had annotated on their data. But in this sense, we're seeing it in the context of other data sets that have been curated. Um, and this gives you some information related to the overlap and the similarity score with the author's sort of original marker. So how is these other data sets matching um, those original markers. And as you can go further, we do see that there are other data sets that also have this high expression of this FAP4 um, high macrophage um, sort of subtype. Um, so how can this support you in annotating your um, sort of cluster directly on your data? What you can do then is sort of um, agree with the final annotation based on these different sort of um, data sets that are giving that information. Um, so we can directly see that this sort of GSC169471 data set is replicating the same analysis as what was found in the author's original publication. Um, so we'll just add this FAP4. Okay. Okay, and you can add it as a plus, or you can say it's a FAP4 high macrophage. Um, so once you have the annotation, just make sure that you save it in your metadata so that the actual final annotation is applied to the original um, sort of network cluster-based um, analysis. Um, so you'll be able to see sort of the specific annotations based on your overview of the data. Um, so this is sort of one contest where it's giving us the ability to verify, okay, that there is a cluster 12, which is specific to this FAB, um, FAB P P4 um, sort of um, characterization. So if we could then go back to the overview and we want to be able to replicate other results um, from the author's um, original publication, um, let's go into cluster eight, which is another cluster that um, the cell typing tool also identified as a macrophage. Um, but we want to see what sort of um, characterization or subtype it is. Um, so I'll go into this macrophage and explore the agreement rate with other data sets. And here you can basically see um, there's many data sets um, that are more specific where it's able to give you information relating to the SPP1 um, enrichment. Um, so this was a huge result um, originally from the publication. Um, and as you can see, um, comparing this sort of data set, um, GSC128, um, it directly shows that there is an SPP1 high macrophage sort of characterization or sort of subgroup um, profile. Um, if we go to these other data sets here that are not as enriched, um, but that there is sort of an interesting result. Um, so let's say we go into this other um, analysis. You can see that there's other information relating to either like hypoxia associated monocytes. Um, and there's also some that are monocyte derived um, sort of um, SPP1 enriched groups. Um, so this just means that it's sort of what it's trying to tell you is that it raises a question um, how the cell type condition is associated um, with high SPP1 expression and how can you apply that further into the data, okay? So I'm gonna share a bit uh, more results. Um, so as I mentioned, the sort of B Browser X system aside from the cell typing tool, which allows you and supports in sort of adding final annotation in verifying and replicating what other authors have found in their data. Um, what you can also do is sort of apply different visualization tools and directly analyze um, different cell populations based on gene expression or differential expression analysis or other types of sort of cell state trajectory analysis as well. Um, so if we go back and try to sort of understand um, this in the context of the original study, um, so we can see that if we try to replicate these results in the system, this data set studies sort of the effect of different allergens on asthma and non-asthma patients. And it also shows um, that this data set that we found that correlated with this um, sort of FAB P4 enrichment, um, it also has specific macrophages that are mainly concentrated in the lower sort of airway mucosa. 
Um, so you can see that this sort of data set is mirroring what was found in the IPF data set, but it, in the context of other sort of lung disease etiology. Um, so what else does this sort of information tell us? So the Fab P4 macrophages were abundant at baseline in, in sort of the disease, um, but significantly decreased after allergen exposure um, with the SPP1 sort of macrophage um, enrichment showing the opposite pattern. Um, so the, this is some sort of inferences that you can directly run um, from the talk to data or the B Browser X system. And if we look further into other sort of data sets that we found in the repository that were that were having sort of this overlap to our data set, we can see that this data set GSC 193816, which is sort of analyzing other asthma patients, um, we can see that um, the SPP1 expression, while um, FAB-P4 was sort of decreased, um, you do see sort of changes um, in the sort of lower lobes of the lung. Um, so this is some sort of information that you are able to replicate directly in the B Browser X system in order to sort of see um, the sort of verification or the replication of other um, data set analysis, or for example, our specific um, reference data set that we're using in this case. Um, so this does show very dramatic changes based on the lung location and how this fab P4 um, sort of gene marker um, profile of these macrophages is to make significantly sort of decrease in the IPF um, sort of disease. Okay, other sort of case studies. So another sort of data set that we um, looked in the sort of cell typing meta reference tool that had similarities um, based on the macrophage sort of characterization is this GSC 145926 study. So this study specifically looked at COVID-19 patients. It didn't look at IPF or asthma. Um, but we still saw very similar sort of enrichment um, patterns and mainly relating to the SPP1 um, increased enrichment um, while we see that FAB-P4 is de decreased in the context of COVID-19. Um, and you do see that um, sort of the B Browser X system allows you to sort of generate these results where you can see differences in the actual severity of the patient. So we can see that there is sort of a clear enrichment in the SPP1 in the severe group as compared to sort of critical ICU patients. Um, and you see that the healthy control has a very high enrichment of FAB-P4 um, sort of um, characterization or expression in these macrophages. Um, so this sort of um, tells us that the data set examines um, how sort of these three macrophage um, subclusters um, in IPF compared to COVID-19 um, were found and that there are similar patterns um, that are observed um, relating to the SPP1 expression, which is increased in this sort of disease severity. Um, while you see that FAB-P4 expression is decreased, and this is sort of um, consistent in COVID-19 as it is in IPF, um, looking at the different data sets from the repository. Okay. Um, so if we go even further, um, so some of the sort of summaries that we can see um, from this analysis, so we can use the meta reference tool to really predict um, three different macrophage subtypes. So we can see that we were able to sort of um, analyze these SPP1 high macrophages um, based on cluster 10, which was the first part of it. Um, we can also see that there is an FCN1 high macrophage and sort of a decrease in this fat P4 macrophage, which is sort of consistent um, with different levels of severity in COVID-19 as it is in IPF. Um, how do, is this sort of um, relevant in the context sort of of clinical translational research? Um, so this is not only important for a sort of academic interest or a sort of um, exploratory analysis, but this also holds a potential for translational and clinical application. Um, so when we identify these different specific macrophages subtypes, um, we can see that this provides sort of insights into the disease pathogenesis and the progression of disease. Um, we can then sort of target. So if we know for a fact that there's um, very specific SPP1 um, sort of characterization um, and enrichment profiles in these macrophages, we can use the SPP1 um, as a key as a sort of a key player in the sort of macrophage proliferation and fibrosis process. Um, so we can directly as researchers try to find antibodies or small molecules that can specifically target SPP1 um, or other osteopotent antibodies um, to reduce the number of SPP1 high cells in these um, sort of macrophages and reduce then sort of the drive for this fibrosis in these patients. Um, so this is sort of a, a good start for a sort of immo immune modulatory um, sort of analysis. Okay. 
So um, for now, sort of this is sort of the end of the sort of um, information how to apply the meta reference tool. Um, so the next step is sort of the Q&A session. If anyone in the sort of call has any questions that um, need further clarification um, or other specific questions relating to how cell typing tool can be applied to your specific case study. Um, so I'll go through the Q&A um, and I'll try to see if I can respond specific questions. Um, so will we be able to explore further details given um, the references directly from the platform? Um, so yes, you can explore this further. And this is a question from Jasper. Um, so there's two ways that you can do this. Um, if you notice that there's other data sets that are correlating with your results, um, what you can do is go into the sort of um, B Browser X system um, and try to go back to sort of the ecosystem. So if I open sort of our ecosystem landing page, um, it'll take us to sort of all the different modules in the ecosystem. Um, so all of the data that is used in the meta reference cell typing tool is coming from our talk to data repository. So if a user wants to be able to directly go into those references and analyze those references further or look at what type of cells or how the author annotated those cells, you can directly sort of select what species um, you're mainly working on, what type of um, sort of technology. So if you're not only concentrating on sequencing data, but you also want to apply that into spatial imaging data. So even going further, okay, what location in the lung, we're seeing this enrichment of SPP1. Um, you can look at different spatial transcriptomics data that you're able to look at the location of that marker on the tissue. Um, but you can directly go to any database. You can look at the different studies that we have curated so far in the database, and you can explore all of these different studies directly from the database. Um, so this explore function allows you to go into that data set further or you can directly use our standardized ontology system to be able to identify other data sets that are sort of have that expression profile as my study that I'm analyzing. Um, so this is one way that you can do that. Um, other sort of um, questions here. So what different data sets um, define the cell type um, as same cluster differently? Will the app provide independent suggestions that can be applied to my data? So this is a question coming from Jacob. Um, so yes, there is a way that this will be further sort of um, developed. So our team are currently looking at um, sort of a future direction in the filtering meta reference database where you would be able to actually select what tissue you want to use as the reference or what type of condition. Um, from those studies you actually want to use um, to train the model. Um, so this is actually um, a future direction that will be sort of available in the next coming months um, where you're able to directly select what studies um, you want to use from the database that are specific to the context of your um, analysis or your type of tissue that you're working on. Um, and as you can know, this is very important, especially if you're working on sort of tumor cells and you want to be able to sort of apply this from specific sort of tissue sampling sites um, that you're working on um, and not only other sort of tissues. Um, so this will be sort of a further direction that we'll be focusing on. Um, another question coming from Vineet is, um, can we use different reference data than the type of data in query? So for example, CiteSeq or um, other single cell RNA-seq. Um, so yes, this kind of goes into sort of the future direction of the meta reference database, um, but we're also going to develop it where it's gonna be able to add CiteSeq data or other types of sort of um, RNA bulk data as well. Um, so this is just sort of the first stages of the meta reference tool, which is it is pulling sort of 150 millions of cells currently in the model. Um, but you will be able to either apply it um, specific data sets to your context and also other types of data, not only single cell RNA-seq. Um, so this will be developed further in the model. But at the moment, um, it's mainly single cell RNA-seq. Okay. Um, so I think these are our main questions for um, today. Um, but yes, if anyone has any questions or there's other questions that weren't answered during the session today, um, we'll sort of um, follow up with you directly and sort of give you more information relating to the system. Um, and I do want to mention before we do end sort of the um, webinar today. So this is a biweekly sort of um, biweekly exploration seminar. So each sort of biweekly session will try to focus on either a different disease etiology um, and how can we use different features in the B Browser X system to analyze 
um, that type of analysis. Um, so it will not only include single cell RNA seq, but we will have exploration clubs that will mainly focus on spatial transcriptomics analysis or cell to cell interaction analysis. Okay. Um, so yeah, is, does anyone have any other questions? Um, I think for today's session, so this is the end of the session today. Um, but as I mentioned, if you have any other questions, you can always reach our team at support um, at biotrain.com. And this also is important if you haven't already used the system and you're actually new to biotrain, um, you can always request sort of a demo or sort of a training period, um, trial period to use the system as well um, and sort of utilize all of the different public um, data sets that we have currently. Okay. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining um, sort of the webinar session today. It was great seeing um, sort of a high attendance rate today. Thank you.